Hey guys, welcome back to another video where we're gonna do a summoner healer build. We're gonna do a summoner healer build and gameplay and benchmarking to show you guys how summoner healer is good, why it's good, the, why you should play summoner healer over either druid heal or priest heal. Basically anything about healing today we're gonna cover in this video because summoner healer is the thing right now and it's gonna be like this for a while, even when 12.0 starts and into 12.0 quite a quite a long time. Summoner healer is still the meta, so um, let's jump straight into it. First off, the build really important. Without the build, you can't do much. Um, quite important to say, I have the maximum talent points you can get uh, minus one from Irene. I didn't have yet, so this is 81 talent points and then 71 rubies. Uh, I will try to tell you guys as well where to adjust if you have less of them, but it shouldn't be uh, too much of a difference. So first we're gonna pump up our average shadows to rank 2. This is not for anything, you can pump up, pump up anything you like. But we need to get into the second rank, so it's kinda inefficient how the developers made it like this. Because healers can't use anything from this first top, or shouldn't use anything from the first top. So we're taking the average shadows to rank 2. We finally unlock our blade stages, we're gonna go straight to rank 3. Why rank 3? Because it increases the amount of shields you apply as a stack. Uh, to your targets so when you have rank one we use it on ourselves we're only having two stacks another really good thing that they buffed recently is that it applies defense effect all the time as long as you have blood ages active on yourself this is amazing because defense applies a 40 percent mitigation on the target with your blood ages and the great thing about it is that the buff lasts 15 seconds and the cooldown is 15 seconds that means you can have it up permanently as long as you have the blood ages uh, stacks on the target because they did nerf it in the way how it's used it used to be that it only removes one layer one stack of the blood ages effect when your target took more than something like 10 15 percent of his total health in one hit then it would remove one stack now it removes one stack regardless of how much simply direct at damage not AoE, if it's AoE, it doesn't reduce the stacks. Only direct damage to the target with the Blood Ages is going to move one stack of the effect. When it has no stacks left, the defense buff disappears as well. So it's gonna be, it's pretty good. I think it's a buff after all. So definitely rank free because then you have six stacks. That means the enemy has to hit you more than, than on rank 2 or rank 3 in order for, for him to remove your blood ages effects. Him being either PvP or PvE, doesn't matter. Healing is universal, healing is for both uh, PvX. Um, then we go for Blade of Mending rank 3 because that's a pretty decent AoE healing ability. I didn't test it too much but from what I recall it used to be good. I already, already know that the, our main healing spell Dark Funeral has some AoE PR rubies as well, but um, we're taking it for the sake of good old, goodwill and nostalgia. I think it's still pretty decent. While we're at here, we're gonna take Hall of Death rank 1. You're probably gonna wonder why do we take Hall of Death rank 1. It's because of a ruby we're gonna take on later, but I'm not gonna go too much into rubies right now. But here's Bloody Screen. Which makes Blood Ages additionally heals the target for blah 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 every time they take damage. So that's every time they basically take damage from AoE or direct damage on Blood Ages, it's gonna heal them. But then, as you can read while I'm brabbling myself, a Hall of Death additionally applies a Blood Ages to the summoner. That means your Hall of Death on healer aspect is a defensive ability. It does cost quite it's a lot of a Blood Bank, but the uh, once we have our build finished, we're gonna have enough blood bank all the time. I'll be able to use this during combat so that it can shield your target, whatever it is, tank or DPS or support, and yourself when an AoE is about to hit. So you don't have to pick targets. You can literally always defend yourself and the person you're supposed to heal. Which is a big buff. This is a really big change that wasn't a thing before, so that's a big advantage. Next up we take Fear rank 1 simply to have a crown control effect, only increasing the rank reduces the cooldown which is nice because we're going to leave it on rank 1 for now and then see where people get with the talent points. Next up of course we're not taking aspect of assault because we're not doing DPS. Blood ties is a really good ability, rank 1 is really meh because it only really, what matters here is this percentage of health loss that it heals. So you heal your ally for blah 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 for an extra 5% of their lost health. 
meaning this ability becomes stronger in healing the less health your target has. Going from rank 1 to rank 2 up adds 10% to that healing, so that is a 15% healing, and then going to rank 3 it brings you up to 25% of healing. Meaning, if your target has 1% life left, life left and you use blood ties, you're gonna heal that person for 24% minimum, plus more from the healing stats and healing multipliers, this and that, blah blah. But it's really good ability, so you gotta take it. The cooldown is 10 seconds, but with rubies, you'll be able to decrease it to 3 seconds. Really, really good. Of course, we're gonna take aspect of healing to rank 3, otherwise, you're not a healer. Uh, healing and Yashin used to be really good, but unfor unfortunately, and I tested this today a lot, they nerfed it so much that to the point where it's just skip, hard, pass. Don't take this ability, sadly, it's been nerfed. So, in order for us to move on to the next grid, what should we take instead? Well, I would suggest you to simply pump up the fear to rank 2, because um, that's the only useful thing we can still have, and then we we're gonna go for Searing. Searing basically is gonna damage your target that you want to use this on a bit, but then it heals them by a lot. It's worth it, it's pretty good. It's been nerfed from what I recall as well, but it's still in the, in the range of decent. Add some to that healing. Uh, then we're gonna take Ghostly World to rank 3 because we need a long CC, and a long CC is really helpful for PvE and PvP, both alike actually. But then we're stuck again, we can't move to the next grid again, so we need to see what else we can pump talent points in, and then I would go Fear rank 3. Then we take Dark Veil as well. So Dark Veil makes your target become like into a Ghost World, pretty, pretty much makes them immune, and purifies one debuff from them. This is a really good ability, a lot of summoners I see playing are not using this or not as often as they should have, so really practice on using this ability. This is making you immune, this is making you godlike. Each rank up simply extends the duration by 1 second from the base of 4. So rank 1, 4, rank 2, 5 seconds, rank 3, 6 seconds. Really good ability. A uh, small detail is that you can only use this in combat too. Then we have our main ability spell to heal is Dark Greenwell. This is your best healing ability and your damage mitigation as well for absorbing damage. You'll see that later with the rubies. So we're taking this straight to rank 3 and put it somewhere comfortably, comfortably because this is what you're going to use a lot for healing. Next up our lurker. We need a lurker to um, harvest blood for us passively. Now increasing its rank reduces the damage it takes from single target and DOT damage. It's immune to AoEs anyways already, so that's a good thing. But I believe for PvP, you want to push this up higher, obviously, because you don't want it to die for PvP. But for PvE, it's pretty decent to leave it at rank 1. So we're going to basically, since healing is universal, we're going to go straight to rank 3. Why rank 3? Because we're going to have plenty of talent points left over. I'm not sure even where to spend all of them. Because oh, the next two ones, we have Dark Figure, we get this to rank 1, only so that we can have this bonus to drop in blood. Because when you have this buff active, you're gonna get way more drops of blood, because you get 1 per second. Now the damage is dealt, it doesn't matter for us because we're healing, and then we're using the Lurker, so the Lurker attacks apply Helplessness effect. Helplessness makes the target unable to do anything. But that's it really, when you increase the rank it doesn't reduce the cooldown, it doesn't, it doesn't increase our healing, it doesn't increase anything that we need to use on healer aspect. So we leave this on rank 1. And then we have Dark Palm which is uh, an AoE damage. The damage is doubled to players so that's a good one for PvP. But nothing adds to our healing ability. So if you look back on the abilities we have right now, we have everything that we need for the healing. Everything is maxed out and that's really it. We have 17 talent points left. I'm going to let it up to you guys to choose what you want to take because we've taken what we need for the healing. Now why not taking Bloodstream because Bloodstream is a really, really weak ability, really weak for healing and when I was testing the healing gameplay, I never felt the need to use an alternate ability to get back my blood. So I'm going to leave that where it is and then we're going to move on to the rubies. So for her rubies, um, I did try a lot of determination. And sadly, determination doesn't really work. Um, it's only useful to use determination on your healing. 
when you're going between 90% and 100% of your bar at all times. Otherwise, you just gotta focus on proficiency, brutality, and for some really important supremacy. But so, determination isn't that useful. So don't focus on determination. Uh, but we need to get this bigger ruby, and this one is useless to us, so we're gonna go with determination anyway, uh, because that's always useful, and it's the best option we can take. Next to this, we're gonna take blood fountain. We're gonna generate one drop of blood every one second. So that's really good in combat, obviously. We can really use that. And that's really all we need on the first grid. Everything else is for DPS or slash support spec. Moving on to the second grid. Um, we're gonna take our supremacy rubies because supremacy increases our healing by a ton. I'm gonna quickly go to the description here. Increases damage dealt and healing by 45% if there's no allied players within 5 yards of the summoner. What this does is this is increasing your healing by a ton, like a ton ton of percentage stat value. Because meaning, if you have the same stats in proficiency, determination or brutality, you're never gonna get the same percentage from supremacy. 750 is a soft cap, so try to not go above 750. I'm kind of doing a bad here. Uh, I'm still gonna test what run is better, but um, I don't think the difference of one gear piece makes that much of a difference. But it's a good habit to know that 750 is your soft cap. Try not to go above 750. So moving on from the supremacy, we wanna go to the brutality rubies here. Now we can do it two ways. Um, we have vigor here that we wanna take as well, because vigor is really important. Figure is your base damage less healing done by you. Uh, these stats are like small, smaller multipliers, but vigor is your main thing. Now vigor is gained on your gear. This is always gained on your gear as a base thing, but uh, the amount of vigor is based on the level of your equipment. So the higher the level your equipment is, the more vigor you get. And that is why, uh, that is how the progression system works in the Alliance Online. When you go up in level, you're going up in damage. Uh, you're going up in health that's because of this vigor and stamina those are the base values anyway so when we go from there um you want to go for blessing of the dead because that gives you a incoming damage reduction by 20 percent when you have both uh, which is really good now the, the down thing about this is that average shadows is going to do less damage but consumes one less drop of blood average shadows it is his duty we pushed up the rank two you see blood bang is two Meaning, if you take this rank 2, it's going to be free to cast without blood consumption. This might be good for some to push up your determination perhaps while healing. But you're going to have to micromanage a lot, keeping those dots up on multiple targets. Which might be inefficient then again. So, if you really want to go active gameplay, I guess you can do that. But I'm going to leave it as it, as it is. Um, and just focus on healing my targets. Now, while under Dark Veil, vale, Lamia... You generate one blood, uh, one drop of blood every second. This might be good for when you think you're gonna need blood and you need to fail yourself then. But I'd rather save bail for the moment you really need it to save somebody. So we're gonna... Uh, I wouldn't use it for the blood. Just know that you're gonna get bonus blood when you have it. We're not going to take any determination stats. Because like I said, determination doesn't really help us at all during healing because we're not getting above that 90%. If you do have rubies left over, which we'll see in a bit, uh, then you can take them obviously. We have then Catabolism. Catabolism increases the casting speed of our healing abilities, under which Dark Renewal and Blade of Mending and Blood Feast. Bloodstream we're not using, but the other ones we'll be using. As you can see here now, Bloodstream takes, uh, sorry, Dark Renewal takes 2.5 seconds to cast. If we have this, and we're gonna do our aspect, because it is, you see that it requires aspect of healing, meaning when you take rubies and you have your aspect active already, those rubies will not be active unless until you recast your aspect. So it was 2.5 seconds cast time and then it changes to 1.9. So it saves you a lot of cast time in the end um, by just having those. Now we're gonna go for blood piece. Blood piece is an ability we don't really use aside for getting blood. We take damage to ourselves as you can see. But we're using this especially to raise our blood here. Watch out as well when you're using it uh, before combat because it does AoE damage around you in a size of 8 yards. There we go. So watch out that mobs aren't too close near you. 
understand when you do this because you might start combat and expect it that way and uh, wipe your party like so obviously we're taking the stamina rubies because we want the more health really important then blood flattening is really good as well we're only going to leave this on rank one because the cooldown is 20 seconds and the area that we drop here exists for 22 seconds so it used to be different but they uh, buffed this it in some way buffed this in the way that you can have it permanently with only needing a run ruby nerfed it in the way from why you're using this is because as long as you are in this area uh, their incoming damage cooldown cast time and the global cooldown of all abilities are reduced by 10% so this is a pure buff for you but this used to be like 10% 20% 30% depending on the rank and now as you can see it doesn't change anymore it simply reduces the cooldown which i believe is useless um, because you can't have it up permanently one with shadow a lot of people are taking this because it is a good ability i agree uh, so when you're below dropping below 40% you basically purify everything from yourself and then for two seconds you become kind of immune to any damage now we're not going to take this because of the very specific reason that when we go in heroics and you've got Phoenix cloister and you go to blast boss there's this thing where he applies the dot on you and when that dot gets purified you wipe the whole party instantly done um, so you get that dot and you might not drop below 40% but then he does an AV at some point where you might drop below 40% when that happens you basically wipe your party we've had it happen before a lot of other people know it as well that it happened before so um, we're not gonna take this this is basically a party killer on that a lot we're gonna go with um, either we can go weeper way so that your lurker does some non-existent healing and some non-existent damage AOE and then we can take these body screens which is what we want to have that uh, extra defense from Call of Death or if you have the rubies left over you can simply go the way of Path of Rebirth so that while you're under your Dark Veil this is Dark Veil you're gonna do 50% more healing to every, everyone uh, that you heal which is a pretty good uh, buff considered to this one it just requires one more ruby to get where we want and this one ruby is also going to be wasted on willpower because which we really don't need for pve but pvp it might come in handy so i'm going the long way because i know myself that i have the rubies left over one more thing that we can take is also this step through the shadows step through the shadows is good for it to generate five drops of blood and a teleport on your target so when you take this i'm gonna show you guys so when you use it you're gonna teleport on your target and you're gonna get your drop of blood by five increased but for pvp it's really good because it applies vulnerability for four seconds so when you're healing and you're doing this on a, on a target with your dps and you coordinate when you're doing it you can do some pretty nice burst that way and that's not bad at all it's also an aoe ability it's an aoe uh, vulnerability application so that's pretty good too and for allies get blood first which means blood lust um, so you get more blood lust for four seconds now the thing that we took in between was watching with blood basically snares when you do blood feast really important not to use this in heroics near monsters because when you snare them they're gonna simply go for you instead ignore the tank aggro and they're gonna kill you one shot so really only use this basically when you start combat to Make sure your blood bank is full or use it when you know that you're not going to snare anything around you so that's a quite important detail to, to know about um we're gonna come back to borrowed life here when we have rubies left over basically your dark will, um on a target including you i guess all your outgoing healing increased by 15 percent it's kind of the same as this one but this is 50 percent while you are at the dark veil uh, which happens quite often that you're gonna veil yourself because we're not gonna veil tanks anymore that uh, that time is gone um, Because it's gonna remove reset their aggro completely. It's basically the game is gonna see them as as if they have died So their aggro completely resets uh, Hence the dark world the ghostly world they enter Then up to the next crit the last crit we have tomaturge here tomaturge is really important because it increases our blood bank to the maximum here You're gonna see in a bit and it also increases our outgoing healing by 15% which is really useful for us now as you can see our blood bank will increase to the maximum we can have and there we go that's why we unlock 
Hall of Death. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys here Hall of Death. When you use Hall of Death, you're gonna see that um, I need to redo my aspect as you can see. All right, so we have this up now. We're gonna do Hall of Death, and as you can see, I have the defense effect all the time, and you have your blood ages. And we still have the cooldown ready for blood ages to use it on another targets. So basically, Hall of Death became a defensive ability. Granted that you can use it on your enemy. Basically, when you're doing a healing and an AV is gonna happen, you simply do Hall of Death on somebody, on something, so that you have defense yourself as well. And there's a bit, much better chance for you to survive. Uh, the reanimation, we're gonna go for reanimation because it's gotten buffed by a lot. This thing is a beast. This is what makes healing, but well, this is what makes healer healing. Without this ability, basically, you're gonna have a hard time healing up. This has a cooldown of only 10 seconds, it's gonna be amazing on numbers. You'll see on the gameplay we're gonna do, but you can't heal without this ability. Here's some rubies as well that the healing injection and reanimation efficiency increases by under 30%. We're taking this. Healing injection is this ability we skipped, like I said, I've tested it a lot and sadly it's been nerfed instead. They basically swapped healing in action for, re for reanimation back in the day because reanimation used to be really bad and healing in action used to be really good. So they switched that. Next to that, something we, we really need to make reanimation strong is called Blood Pact. Blood Pact is going to make it so that every time we damage ourselves, we're going to have stacks, uh, a certain amount that's going to give us Blood Pact stacks. So as you can see, for every time. We heal 100 points of health, we get one stack of blood pact, up to 1000 stacks of blood pact, meaning you need to heal uh, a total of 100,000 um, to get the maximum efficiency from this. When you did that, your summoner's ongoing healing is increased by 0.01% for each stack of the effect, so that's multiplied by 1000 because we're gonna have 1000 stacks, means we're gonna have a 10% uh, healing boost when we have this active. And then when you use reanimation, it absorbs the blood pact effect completely, healing the target for 4.18 for each stack of the effect, multiplied by 1000 because of one health, we have 1000 stacks. So it's going to apply 4180 healing on top of the other base healing that we have from reanimation itself. So moving on, we have Cold Flame. Cold Flame is going to reduce the cast time of Pottery by one second. And the healing increased by 20%. Now, what is Coltree? This is a translation error. Coltree means searing. As you can see, the translation says the summoner cauterizes. Cauterizes comes from Coltree, I, su I suspect. Um, so we can see here at the bottom of the, of the description, it says, and then healing them for blah, blah, blah. After three seconds, it has no cast time. So I'm assuming that three seconds is going to lose one second. So it heals faster. So it's going to heal them within two seconds instead. So the healing is a bit delayed, but it's going to be delayed less with this ruby and the healing done will be increased by one fifth. Then we have cellular recovery, efficiency healing of dark green wool, which is what we use all the time. Blade of mending is the AOE healing we're going to use often. And bloodstream, which we don't use, is going to be increased by 10% per rank. Rank 3 gives 30%, that's a big plus. Then we have Path of Life and Death. This increases our movement speed by quite a lot for anything we use that is channeling. So Dark Green Roll, Blade of Mending and Dark Stream is going to increase our movement speed by a lot. This is useful to have, especially to avoid circles. Now, Bloody Sacrifice, every time you use spells, deal damage to you. Six allies with the lowest health within 20 yards are healed for blah blah blah. This means it's an AoE healing because you're doing similar healing is basically all the time damaging yourself. They're like big gothic girls all the time. They're damaging themselves all the time in order for to in order to heal others around them. So we have a passive AoE healing going on. Now I don't think the numbers are that much. We're gonna skip it for now and just take it when you have rubies left over because there's better options to take right now, such as Blade Bringer increases the efficiency of the aspect of healing by 25 percent and increases caution meaning the aspect here that says your healing increased by 30 percent you increase this here well, by taking these rubies 75 100 percent so you're basically going to heal 150 percent more but it's not adjusted on the aspect of course and your caution gets a big bonus too of 150 stats so those are free stats. And then on the gear, you have caution. Usually you can put vitality or survivability instead. So you have some more there. Flow of life is basically making blood feast, healing everything around you. 
Blood Feast is this one. Like I said, cooldown is quite long, 16 seconds. We're not gonna use this as a healing ability because it's pretty, pretty inefficient as well. So we're not taking this. We're gonna go for healer's motto because this is our mitigation I was talking about earlier when we use Dark Renewal, Page of Manning and Bloodstream. These are basically always the same abilities because they mean channeling. So when you're channeling here, when this is going on, this is channeling. You're doing the same thing for Blade of Manning, and then you're doing the same thing for Bloodstream. Uh, you're gonna take less damage during this channeling. It's 10% rank 1, 20% rank 2, 30% rank 3, which is really good. Next to that, casting Dark Renewal and Bloodstream heals two party members within 30 yards of the main target with the lowest health for 24% of the ability's maximum healing. Another passive AoE healing we get here by simply using our main ability to heal. So we see a lot of healing that's AoE from a Summoner, aside from Bridge of Mending, is all passive. Then we have Symbiosis. You receive 25% of the healing dealt to the ally under Blood Ages. So if you take rank 3, it's gonna go 75%. This should make it so that when you're healing your tank, you shouldn't be have to heal yourself all the time. It's also necessary because if you don't have these rubies and you heal your target all the time with blood ages on them, obviously you're gonna have this on them. You're gonna heal them, but you're not gonna heal yourself. And you know that Summoner heals himself all the time or heals others by damaging himself. That means he's gonna end up with no health left while healing the, the target all the time without these rubies. Now when an AoE comes, you're gonna pretty much dead because you're gonna be around the 10% of your health at all the time during combat, which is not a good thing to see. So that's why you need these rubies. Hemodynamics, efficiency of healing of blood ties increased by 10%, and this is where the cooldown of blood ties reduces. Like I said, 10%, 10 seconds healing. If you take this, it goes to three seconds, 70% reduction. Redo your aspect because it has healing aspect requirement and you can see it's 10 seconds changes to three seconds really good ability to use especially as a panicker so go for it hyperemia also requires aspect of healing so redo your aspect blood ages additionally applies the hyperemia effect which increases healing received from the summoner by five percent by ten percent by fifteen percent for 30 seconds really big healing bonus so when you apply let me get some blood quick when you apply blood ages, you still have your defense, you have this, and I didn't redo my aspect. So when you apply blood ages, you're gonna have this buff here, the purple shield, which is gonna increase your healing. From the summoner, basically, we know that it's 15%, it doesn't say in the description. Now, the great thing about this is that when you remove it, well, I can't remove it, but when you use your uh, hole of death to get your shield as well, it's also applying this to yourself. So that means you're also going to apply this to yourself during combat when you do Hall of Death. That means your AoE healing is also going to be buffed up on yourself and so on. So it's all going into synergy. Uh, so it's really good Ruby to have. Um, and then Plebotomy. When you inflict damage to yourself with healing spells, which you do all the time, with a 50%, with a 100%, chance you receive a blood drop of blood so that's more blood from damaging yourself you get here drops of blood every second in combat from this ruby you get drops of blood every time your lurker attacks so you really shouldn't run out of drops of blood at all times now we have six rubies left over um what would we put them in so i would uh, suggest borrowed life here dark fell increases your healing done when your dark fell is used on a target i'm assuming your on a target also includes you so then when you use it on yourself it is 15 percent plus 50 percent healing power over flesh using healing abilities has a 50 percent chance to apply power over flesh to the summoner and it can stack up to three times the maximum now what this does is that the amount of health restored by dark renewal and healing in the action will be increased by eight percent the cast time of healing injection will be reduced by 11% per st stack of the effect. Right, so this is for injection basically a lot, which is not good, but the amount of health restored by Dark Renewal will be increased by 8%, by 16 and by 24, which is good because we're using it all the time. Let's see here. There we go. We have power over flesh here. 
This is basically the back in the day for people that are playing Summoner back then. The Necropotency where you could use Dark Queen will instantly on yourself as healing over time. Or you could use something else instantly without cast time. This is the same thing basically. But now this is the greasing or Dark Queen will. And then the buffs itself is basically for the healing and the action which we don't have to insta cast instead of having the cast time there. Down this bloodstorm still, bloodstorm has this good ruby, has a 25% chance to generate one drop of blood. I don't know what this means, has a 25% to generate one drop of blood on what, on when, uh, whenever you use an ability, whenever a second pass is in the game, I have no idea what it does, but I have rubies left over and you want blood, so you're gonna take the ruby. But I hope this is gonna be fixed at some point in the future update. And then that's we have one ruby left. Now most of you will be out of rubies for those for those that are not out of rubies. We're gonna go with uh, bloody sacrifice to do some passive AoE healing every time you damage yourself. All right, so then into the gameplay of the summoner healer. And I'm gonna simply uh, be standing here to take damage so you guys can see what happens when you heal. So first thing that I want to talk about is this power over flesh here. Power over flesh, I'm a bit confused because it says using healing abilities has a 50% chance to apply power over flesh. So whenever you heal yourself, basically you're going to have this. And as, as you can see, we have three stacks. And every time I use Dark Renewal, it disappears because it's going to be used to do the following. The amount of health restored by Dark Renewal and healing action will be increased by 24%. So for every... A stack you have I believe is gonna be increased the healing done by dark renewal by 24% and the cast time of healing in action will be reduced for each stack of the effect yeah so it is per stack of the effect so if you have three stacks of this effect you're basically gonna do 24 48 and then 72% more healing with dark renewal than you would without these stacks so you get these stacks all the time as you can see here uh, depending on RNG how many heals you proc and then you get those stacks now the thing that here is, is that the power over flash is not applied if you are healed by these abilities. So I'm assuming that the bonuses from the power over flash, if you are healing yourself, this is not applied. Because as you can see everything else is applied, it's using the stacks, I'm getting the stacks by healing myself, it's using the stacks when I heal myself. So I'm assuming that the damage or the healing in this case is not increased when I'm healing myself or this is a bug either way it's a pretty good uh, ruby to have here so whenever you're healing yourself you have 50% of getting this power over flesh and then whenever you start green roll it increases your healing by 24% per stack or reduces the cast time for healing and action which we don't have anyway by 33% so three stacks means insta cast no cast time required the next thing that happens during the healing is this blood pact thing as you can see 1000 stacks of blood pact remember blood pact back then uh, was here when the summoner inflicts damage to themselves with with bloodstorm blood ties blood feast dark renewal and channel of life they gain one stack of the blood pact effect for every 100 points of health lost so basically the more you damage yourself um, the more stacks you're getting here uh, the summoner outgoing healing so your healing is increased and then when used with reanimation because that's really what matters here i'm gonna drop my health all the way low and we're gonna use one reanimation and you'll see it's gonna absorb all these blood pack stacks but it's gonna heal us to completely full because this spell is so strong let's go to 10 percent here and then use this there we go full health let's see uh the heal meter here um so reanimation here 271k health uh restored i have 344 so it can't heal higher but apparently if you use this on a tank it heals even way more because they have more health and it's really a big lifesaver now don't be don't be confused my dark renewal is my top here because i'm spamming it all the time so i'm healing all the time if you didn't know how this uh, meter works it just so shows you from the beginning of the combat uh what's going on but as you can see here, my Dark Renewal is healing for about 58k to 53k. And then you have your reanimation doing 271k. So this is definitely your strongest healing ability thanks to all these rubies that are supporting this. Uh, so that's basically the gameplay here. I would also never um, heal 
with reanimation without the blood the blood pack stacks. I would only use reanimation when you have the 1000 blood pack stacks, otherwise it's probably not worth it. Because it's, this is adding so much uh, extra healing. Um, if you want numbers, it's basically 4.19 per stack, so times 1000, so 4019. And then the base heal of reanimation is 3400, so it basically does about 110 to 120 more percent um, healing with reanimation because of the blood packs than without. So it's literally more than doubling the healing power from reanimation. So it's definitely not worth it to use without the blood pack stacks. Uh, remember the blood pack stacks you get really quickly by damaging yourself. So dark renewal, cauterize, blood, blood ties, everything you're using as a healer basically always damages yourself. Then about the special abilities such as warp mysteries and racials that you want to use. Um, for the racial, I would suggest channel of life. Channel of life is going to bind yourself to an ally. It's going to make you lose 10% per second, but it's going to heal that target uh, that you used it on by 10% each second. So you're basically transferring 10% from your health to 10% from their health. Now this is OP because when you're using this on a tank, you're only going to do 10% of your health, which is maybe here in this case 34k, but it's going to restore 10% on a tank, which means maybe he has 2 million health, meaning 200k per second. So your 35k health here becomes 200k on the tank, which is a lot of conversion ratio. So that's a really good ability to use on your tank, especially even when you're on DPS pack and you need to off heal your tank, you can use this as well while DPSing on a summoner to help healing the tank, which is usually about 50% health uh, that you heal on your tank. Now we have the warp mystery here that says purification. Purif purification is really underrated, I believe. A lot of people aren't using this as often as they should. Purification simply removes a negative effect. It's a fear, it's a disease, it's a dot, it's a, an explosion is gonna happen, simply spam it it's off global cooldown you can use it really quick if you're quick with clicking and targeting and whatnot so really good ability you have is purification simply use it every time you see a strange debuff on your target in your party great tip for this here is that when you go to interface you can do um always use rate interface really have this ticked on so you always see the rate ui because the rate ui shows always the debuffs there's also one add-on that I'm going to link in the description called Universe. Universe is kind of doing the same thing, but it has its quirks, it has its pluses and it has its minuses, but it does the same thing. It helps a lot for healers to see debuffs that you might want to puree before anyone else sees it. Next to that, we have our War Mystery that you want to use as well, is the Recovery. Now, Recovery, um, now the War Mysteries are uh, separated cooldowns, so don't bother, so don't worry about it. Uh, but your war your racials do share cooldown so you gotta make a big good choice of which uh, racial you want to use and as a healer i would simply go for channel of life no doubt the best uh, racial ability for the healer to use but back to the war mystery we have recovery here heals an ally by 10 percent of your max health every second over five seconds now you can use this in combination with this to counter the damage you will lose um, from general of life but then again, if you're in DPS and off healing the tank, you're gonna heal up yourself with Bloodlust. Bloodlust. If you're gonna, if you're a healer and you're using this, you're basically gonna heal yourself with your abilities. So then again, I'm, I would save this for DPSs around you that you wanna simply throw this on and then move back to your main healing to get them up, to get them, to help them heal up uh, faster that way. So that's it for racials and warp mysteries. These three here, really OP. Then for artifacts, what I would especially recommend is simply going uh, Codex. Obviously Codex for the raw healing increase. Now you can see I have Tarnished here. Um, I don't mind Tarnished because the patch is nearly done here. 12.0 will begin with new artifacts, which will be a completely different um, choice making on what artifact you want to run. But if you're still pre-12.0, um, you want to go for the normal Codex of Life. As you can see here artifacts and then you go to the codex here you'll see that you can get the raw healing it's gonna heal you it's basically as a cross here but then in the healing version so on level 10 you're gonna you're gonna do 25 percent more healing 
opposed to my level 5, 7.5%. Now you're, you're gonna do 15% healing when you have the level 5 codex, opposed to the level 10, opposed to level 5 cross. But uh, if you're a healer, uh, go for codex level 5 to level 10, whatever you can handle in the grinding departments um, for the healing increase, it gives a big bonus. So basically having level 5 too, it's tarnished, that means it's losing half its value in power. Um, I have it level 5 like this because I still don't use the abilities of it, which are really good to have. Next to that, I would go for Dragon Aspis to reduce the damage you take. Really useful to have at all times. Um, and then as a third artifact, I would simply go with the Unity Triquitrim. Why the Unity Triquitrim is because it's going to help you with purification. Basically, your purification is going to do a, a double purification so you don't have to do it again. And it's going to help you on the healing done as well. As you can see, level 4 healing allies applies the United in Happiness effect, which reduces incoming damage from all sources by 1%. So you're basically applying a mitigation damage mitigation by simply healing your allies, which is really good as well. So that's what I would recommend. But then again, tough window is going to change the whole artifact system. I have a video up about that already. Check in the corner here uh, somewhere gonna pop up where you can watch that video if you're interested in the artifacts that are coming with off point no if you're into off point no and you don't know really all about the artifact system make sure to check that out so you know what's going on what's gonna happen what's gonna change with the artifacts and then the final part that we can discuss is the stats the stats are quite important for your gameplay as you can see, I have my stats pretty much as I want them for healing. Um, I would avoid using luck because I don't think the critting on luck is going to be that much of a difference or that useful. Um, supremacy is a definitely must to have. Supremacy is really good for healing. The only catch is that you have to make sure that there's no allied players within 5 yards of the summoner. Now there's a good add-ons for, the, for those um, to, to keep track of that that's going to show you or alarm you when there are people within 5 yards of you. They're also in the description you can use so you'll be knowing when your supremacy is not in effect so that you can ask them to move or simply you can move from them depending if you have your bloodletting up or not because it's quite shitty if you have to move away from your bloodletting just because some asshole is standing near you that is too lazy to move. Uh, so that's for supremacy, uh, like I said, luck is not needed. Swiftness has been changed now, uh, less global cooldown, not less go cooldown, so I would not uh, take this into consideration. And then I would simply go for base stats. Now, like I said, if you somehow manage to get your determination to 90% or above at all times during the healing combats that you're doing, I would go for determination. Um, but if you can't, simply stick to proficiency and brutality. Uh, keep them about equal, but then have your proficiency at least the highest of the two if you have to make a choice so that Valiance can buff your proficiency. Uh, I don't think Brutality is needed for PvE. For PvP, I would do it just differently. I would do Brutality a bit higher than proficiency so that Valiance uh, falls on Brutality so that you can save people much better uh, because you're gonna fight a lot in that caution area, meaning the the area where your targets are below 40% is going to take less damage, so it's going to be easier for them to survive. And you're going to heal a lot in that area because on PvP there's a lot of damage going on until they hit the 40% area. So that's going to help a lot too. Um, of course, it doesn't really matter when your support is going to buff power. Just uh, discuss this with your support so that you know what buffs is going to do. So you, you can adjust accordingly uh, to the buffs they're going to give. So that's really it for the stats, uh, pretty simple, they have simplified a lot from back in the day, there's no double attack anymore to take or uh, swiftness to reduce certain cooldowns of abilities that you want to have, um, which would be really nice for animation actually. But that's I guess the reason why they removed swiftness, because it could be exploited on certain classes where it was necessary on other classes. Uh, for defensive stats I would go with caution, survivability and vitality. Um, ignore the bloodlust, you want to go zero bloodlust, while I'm at it, I'm going to change this quick. So what you want to go for is uh, 750 maximum survivability, so this is a bad example. Otherwise you want to go into caution. I wouldn't push caution above 500 anymore, uh, really, because it's not that useful as it was back then, because it's been nerfed. But on summoner healer you have no choice since uh, I have maximized my vitality on the possible items being earrings, necklace, 
weapons wand and then the boots and spells those are the only items that can offer vitality i have all of them as you can see i have stats too much um so yeah not much you can do about that just have it above 750 i mean just make sure both are 750 then in this case so that you at least have the minimum required uh amount that's about it uh i can tell you guys about stats guys i hope this video was helpful if you're new to healing summoner or if you already were a healing summoner but you learned something even if only one thing that you learned make sure to um Give it a like if you like it guys because i really hope this i'm making this for you guys if it helped you guys you learned something give it a like if you want to see more content about Alice online and more class guides you know what to do give it a subscribe so you'll be updated when a new video goes live um i thank you guys for watching and i hope uh you all will watch me again on the next upload see you then bye, -bye.